that time comes for us to build the church. Alumni, you have been here before. Kindly do something. You didn't have a privilege of having a church those days, but this time we are privileged that we have a piece of land. Let's support the young team to put up a magnificent building uh, so that the Lord will be praised in that church. Now, again, I want to, this morning, also to thank um, uh, Professor Mayo. You all know that uh, we are privileged this morning. And before I give uh, a brief history, this morning also, beside uh, Professor Mayo, we have the wife to him. And you know, any successful man in this world, few succeed without ladies. But majority who succeeds, beside them, we have ladies. And this morning, uh, Grace, the wife of Professor Mayo, is also seated among us. And I want to give this privilege her to stand and say hi before I introduce the husband. Say hi, Mama Grace. Kuja tumbela hapo wasalimu. Thank you. Thank you. He's one of the lecturers in the University of Baraton, and we are glad to have you, Sister Grace, to be part of this occasion. Uh, we really appreciate your presence with the professor and supporting him uh, for the whole success. Uh, professor Mayo has been serving this church for quite some time. He, before joining the institution, he has been serving in different capacities in the Seventh Adventist Church. Later on, he joined Pagama University as the head of um, yeah, information technology in our university in Uganda, Bugema. He was there for quite some time. So later on also, he was the director of IT services in Bugema. And because he was very successful again, General Conference decided to send him to one of our universities in Africa again. He was also called to join Fale View University in Ghana, which later he, also, he was the director of IT center. He was also dean of uh, School of um, Computer Sciences. And finally, uh, before leaving Ghana, he was also DVC Academic Affairs in Valley View University. Of course, he was with his uh, wife. And they were there for quite some time. Later on, the General Conference also made a special request to him to join the University of Eastern Africa Baraton as the Vice Chancellor. Since then, this is his second term. Um, term. Of course, our church works in, uh, in Queen William, five years, five years. So he has been there for the last five years. He's also now in the second term of about eight years in the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. And let me say this, members, that uh, we are proud to have Professor Mayo. Actually, when he came, I've been a uh, a, 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 a council member for quite some time, but we have been struggling with only 1,200 students for the last number of years, about 15 years. But since then, since he joined Baraton University, currently we are now having a population of almost 5,000 students in the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. Ata Musemi, amen. So, Professor has turn things upside down in the University of Baraton. And I'm glad that he's with us this morning. Professor, I've learned something unique about him. Apart from being a leader and also vice chancellor of the University of Baraton, he's a very committed Seventh-day Adventist member. He has been serving in terms of spiritual matters, sometimes preaching in the institution, sometimes visiting our churches around the University of Eastern African Baraton, preaching, and today, we are privileged to have him also as our, one of, uh, as our speaker uh, this morning in, our institu uh, in this institution of University of Eldred, just to tell us something about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this morning, we are privileged. You chose the right person. Personally, I've been blessed. Anytime professor talks, personally, I get blessed. And this morning, I'm, great to, um, I'm grateful to have him as our speaker to our students and this um, Church of uh, Eldred, University of Eldred, I want to bring him before you so that 
He blessed us through God's word. How many of us say, welcome, Professor Mayo? Professor, welcome at this point so that you bless us with God's word. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Pastor Tesoy. I want to thank you for the introduction. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath again. I want Pastor Omotamba, uh, for inviting me to this place. And I want to thank also the elders, the church members, the students, and the staff and faculty for inviting me to this place to speak today. It is a great honor to come here to talk to students and workers. I feel privileged when I am talking with the students and workers. In a special way, I want to thank our president, Pastor Misoy, who is a council member at the University of Eastern Africa, Baraton. I remember I came to this place the last time with Pastor uh, Misiani, the president of the West Kenya Union Conference, when he, you invited him, and then we had to come and support him. And today, you have invited me. So thank you very much for your invitation. I want to say thank you. When I see students like this, and even workers, I see workers of the University of Eastern Africa Baraton also. Who knows, maybe tomorrow you will be a worker at the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. So when I'm talking to you, whether you are a student, I see you as a worker. Whether you are even if you are a student, I can see you also a student at the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. Maybe you do your master's or PhD at the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. So when I see people, I know these are good candidates for the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. Whether you are a worker, whether you are a student, and I want to invite you in a special way to come and visit the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. Those who have not visited, you are most welcome. And those who have visited, you are welcome again. I want also to thank uh, the DVC who spoke here this morning. I think uh, Professor did an excellent job, and I want to thank you, uh, pass my regards to him, as well as the leaders here who are seated at the, un at the University of Eldred. You pass our special regards to the Deputy Vice Chancellor because the participation to get land is really very important. And we want to thank the leaders of this university. I know Professor Agenga, who is the uh, vice chancellor, and uh, I can see from the actions that she is a visionary leader. And please pass our special regards and congratulations to her. Uh, I would like also to thank, to thank the members, especially the church members, and the choir. The choir actually has done an excellent job, and I want to invite them also to the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. At Baraton, we have also a wonderful choir, only that we, are we were still closed. We are opening. In fact, this week we were opening, and registration is going on. I could have come with them also to come and sing. But I want to thank the choir. They, it's a wonderful presentation that they have given. Uh, I came with my wife, who has already been introduced. And I have also Mr. Felix, Felix Jepsiror, who came with me. Uh, maybe you can stand up and wave. Mr. Felix Jepsiror, uh, you can greet the members. Time. May God bless you. Uh, Felix Jepsiror is a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science, that is Information uh, Systems and Computing, and also is the coordinator of online learning. So that is the person who is helping us at the university as far as online learning is concerned. I came also with our media team. At Baraton, we have what we call uh, 
Marathon University uh, Media Center. And uh, Mr. Kevin, you have your team. Maybe Kevin, can you stand up? Where is Kevin? He's the group leader of the Media Center. Uh, Mr. Kevin is, uh, Kevin Nyamnyaka is the one who is in charge of our Media Center, particularly on uh, Baraton TV online. We have Baraton TV online, so when you search in Google or YouTube, Baraton TV, this is the person who is managing the Baraton TV. He has, maybe you can wave and uh, say hi. With him, he has his members. Uh, we, we have his, his team members, they are here. But I think there is one more. Uh, Tway, Tway. Uh -huh. The father is there, but he is part of the media center. He is the son of Pastor Tway, and he's here with us. He is one of the media center team. I want to thank these guys. These are the ones who are managing. If you saw graduation online, these are the people who are managing our university graduation online. So we want to thank you very much for the good work. Uh, we are here, actually, to celebrate what the Lord has done with this church. That is University of Eldred Church. We want to celebrate. We are here to thank God for what he has done. Because to get a place where we can construct a church is a blessing from God. And here we are to celebrate, to thank him for what he has done to us. And we are so grateful that he has given us that opportunity. Uh, my time is limited because right now I think my sermon was supposed to be ending at 12.30. It is only four minutes, so I will just rush to go through the sermon briefly because I will not have time to go into the details. But I want to thank the church here at the University of Eldred. When I saw the, the, the flyer, I was wondering even where they brought the, how they picked the picture. So I, I don't know how the, you, you, you IT people, they are very interesting. I don't know how you managed to pick the picture because I was wondering, where did they get this picture? Maybe, anyway, it's available on, online in many things, but I, I never thought that this one is available online. But I want to thank you also for preparing this one. I want to thank you. As an IT person, I am always uh, put a lot of em emphasis on technology. Uh, the verse that was read, Luke 8, 25, says, where is your faith? And I think this verse is very critical. And it says, one day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. I think this one is in Luke 8, verse 22. But verse 25 says, where is your faith? He asked his disciples. Jesus asked his disciples, where is your faith? In fear and amazement, they ask one another, who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Can we have a word of prayer? Our most gracious Father, what in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of life. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to read your word, May you give us knowledge and wisdom from on high so that, Lord, we can understand the message that you have given us. As, you, as we discuss these verses, Lord, we pray that you talk to your children. And at the end, we give you glory and honor. We pray this and many other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, when we, find, when we read this verse, these verses, Jesus say to his disciples, let us go to the, the other side of the lake. That is the Sea of Galilee. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. And then there was a storm on the lake so that the boat was moving and they were in great danger. 
And the disciples were worried. They were full of fear. And they were wondering, what are we going to do? We are dying. So, as they were getting agitated, what to do? What are they going to do? The, the, life is in danger. The disciples went and walked Jesus. Uh, walk, uh, Jesus. Master, master, we are, going down, uh, we are going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. And then the question Jesus asked, where is your faith? He asked his disciples. And the disciples were shocked that when he spoke, everything was quiet. Then who is this person? So as they crossed the sea, they realized that Jesus had extraordinary powers. The disciples were wondering what to do. And Jesus said, where is your faith? So they look at him as a special person. And all of us in our daily life, we have also storms in our life. We have storms in our life. And since we have storms in our life, we are challenged. We get disappointed in many situations. We get sickness. Sometimes we get frustrated. When the storms of life are raging, we sometimes feel that God has, is, has left us, is far away. Then sometimes even we question God. How could you have allowed this to happen? And I am one of those people who have gone through that experience. Even my wife has gone through the same experience. But sometimes we just feel that God is not with us. We have been praying, we have been doing everything, and we don't know why our, uh, our prayers are not answered. We don't know why God has allowed this thing to happen in our life. Sometimes we go through that kind of experience. There was a time even I questioned, and I was wondering, does really God care? Sometimes we have gone through that kind of situations. But as Jesus asked, where is your faith? And sometimes we have been in this church. No doubt my parents were Adventists. I was born in an Adventist family. But sometimes we feel there was a time when I was feeling whether uh, really does God care? That is the question I used to ask myself. But then, after going through some of the things, some of the difficulties, even some situations that were difficult that we never knew how to manage, but God managed to take us through those challenges. In our life, we have seen God's hand in everything we do. Whether when we were students, even at the time when we were students, even at the time when we were working, even at the time when we started working at the University of Eastern Africa Baraton, we have seen God's hand in everything we do. And we don't have any other thing to say but to glorify him for the wonderful things he's doing in our lives. Some of the things that we do, sometimes even we do not have a solution to a given problem. But God always leads us to succeed. So the question is, do we have faith? Pastor Misoy, the president, mentioned some few minutes that University of Eastern Africa Baraton, we had very low uh, I mean, number of students. The enrollment was very low. And we were wondering whether the university can continue uh, operations. And at that time, when we joined the University of Eastern Africa Baraton, we organized a prayer session. And after organizing a prayer session, we prayed and we said, God, you know where the students are going to come from. 
And we spent a week doing that. And at the end of the week, every person was asking himself or herself, where are we going to get the students? That was a very interesting question. Even at times myself, I was thinking, yes, we have dedicated ourselves to God, we have prayed, we have done this, and this, we, we, we needed to see the number of students coming in. We had some financial issues that we needed also that we should settle. We never knew how the solution is going to be provided by God himself. Even after prayers, we were wondering. But I want to tell you, when the Lord started answering prayers, we found a turnaround in the university. We were surprised to see the numbers. We were surprised to see the financials. We were surprised to see everything coming back the way it is supposed to be. But that was nobody's achievement. I can confidently say that. It is the Lord who intervened in everything we did. So the faith is very important. So where is your faith? Where do you think you put your trust? You are putting your trust on who? Some of us, we have confidence and have faith in ourselves. We have confidence and faith in our education, our wisdom, knowledge, and strength. But is that enough? That should not be the case. Sometimes we trust also human beings. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 5, do not put your strength in a human being. That will be in vain. Therefore, we shouldn't rely on human beings. Do we trust or have faith in our education? Is our faith on, in our education some of us, we have education, masters, PhD, postdoctoral. Some even, those who have gone very high. There are other qualifications like uh, letters, DSC, and the rest. The question is, do we have faith in our education? If that is the situation, we have failed even before we start. Some of us could be having faith in wealth and the money we get. Because when you have money, you have confidence and you think everything is okay. But is our faith in money? Where is our faith? If we put riches or money or even our inheritance to be the basis of our faith, that will be a failure. As given in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 or Hebrews 13 5, 5, we shouldn't rely on wealth or money. Our faith is, should not be there. Therefore, we need to reorganize ourselves and perform or conduct a personal inventory where is my faith. Some of us, we have faith in our careers. Some of us have faith in science and technology. Some of us have faith in our families because you have a good heritage. But what is needed is for us to have faith in God. When you read the verses that we have, been, uh, we have read those uh, Luke 8, verse 22 to 25. You will realize that the disciples were in trouble and they were having a lot of problems. They realized that they were losing their lives and they had no choice. They were afraid. It was full of fear. But Jesus asked, where is your faith? That means we need to put our trust in God. So there are three, three things that we need to identify. 
from the three verses. We need to put our trust in God. So that whatever happens, we know it is God who has mandated it that way. I read a certain article of a Muslim who was traveling in one of the arid areas, especially in North Africa. Mainly it was in North Africa. And when he was traveling in a vehicle, a car, the tire busted. Now, the sound was so loud. And this guy, instead of getting worried, he praised God. Now you are wondering, what happened? This guy was supposed to be worried that now the tire is spoiled, and even the fear of the, the sound. And then, in addition to that, they were in a arid, places, a arid place where they will have to struggle to, to move or even to repair the vehicle. But he just pronounced praising God. And then a friend asked him, why have you done this? to praise God instead of struggling to know that we are in trouble. He said, everything happens to the glory of God. That was interesting. Now, this is a Muslim. So my question is, as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, do we have the faith that everything that happens in our life is led by God? Do we rely on him in everything we do? Because whatever the Lord has done for this church, this time of even getting the land, is a special gift from God. And we need to appreciate and thank him for what he has done to this church. Another thing that was very interesting, especially in the verses that we read about the storm, we realized that the disciples were very worried. They were very they were full of fear. And Jesus said, where is your faith? Because Jesus had the courage. Now, that means also, as a Christian, we need also to be courageous. We need to be courageous. In the Bible, one day Pastor Misoy read a verse and I was, interest, I, I was interested in that verse because he was reading and he said, cowards cannot go to heaven. You remember that someone, Pastor? Cowards cannot go to heaven. That was surprising to me. And he read a verse, I think it was in Revelation. Yes, it was in Revelation. And uh, in fact, it is Revelation 21, verse 8. And I was surprised to know that eh, cowards cannot go to heaven. So that means we need to be courageous. And the verse reads, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who pr practice magic arts, these are the witchcrafts, witch doctors, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. You can imagine. So that means we need to be courageous. There was 